Hello and welcome. Uh, thank you for joining me today for another edition of Journeying with Bongi. Uh, and today I have one key question, which is, are you that person? I'm reflecting on this today, not really a reflection, just sharing with you today, following a video that I received from a friend uh, a few months ago, I think in December, in which a lady was asking similar questions and this friend of mine, uh, shout out to you Solange, um, she felt inspired by it and immediately thought about me. And so when she shared it with me and gave me her reasons why she shared the video with me, I felt really blessed and humbled at the same time. Uh, because who am I? I'm just an ordinary everyday person who, who wants to share my story. Um, and so, well, following from there, um, I just thought one day I would like to touch on this. But also today uh, at Mass, we... Today was the presentation, we're looking at the presentation of the child Jesus in the temple and a visiting priest that we had today was actually talking about um, bapt our baptism, how, when, how at baptism we are sealed and signed, you know, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and we are all made priests, prophets and kings at our baptism. And he was talking about the fact that sometimes we think that only priests and pastors and the religious have to go out and evangelize, forgetting that every single person or Christian, once you're baptized, you need to go out and evangelize. You need to stop being laid back and think it's somebody else's duty. Uh, and he was actually saying he wished a purple ink had been dropped in the oil that we that, that is used for baptism so that it stays permanently on people's forehead. So that if people see you on the street and actually ask you, why do you have that on your forehead? Then you'll be able to talk about your faith. It would be an opportunity to evangelize. So back to the question that I'm asking, are you that person? I'm going to go straight into it. Are you that person who people call when they are in trouble? Are you that person who people come to when they need help, when they need advice, when they're in financial difficulties, when they're trying to look for a job and are struggling with job applications? Are you that person who seeks to find out if their neighbor is okay? Are you that person who helps the poor, who goes to orphanages? Are you that person who, you know, gets out of your way, goes, you know, steps out of your comfort zone to, to support others? Maybe a couple is going through a difficulty. They have mar mar marriage difficulties. Are you that person that they will call to seek help and advice from? Are you that person who, if a lady is going through certain illnesses or a difficult pregnancy they can turn to you for advice or for help are you that person who encourages others to be a better version of themselves are you that person who who quickly congratulates people when they going through successes in their lives even if those successes are not um the same ones that you have or even if those successes are successes you would have wished for yourself and you don't have but are you that person who is able to to look beyond that and congratulate them are you that person who people turn to if they need prayers and intercessions are you that person who visits orphanages and the poor are you that person who helps people with their assessments and dissertations and gives good advice? Are you that person who, in spite of your qualifications and certificates that you've had over the years, maybe you have a master's degree or a PhD, you're using that to, you're putting that to good use, organizing seminars and conferences to encourage other people? 
Are you that person who, in spite of all of these qualifications or whatever position you have in society, you still remain humble? Are you that person who helps community centers around you, who goes to a care home, for example, to visit a lonely person or an elderly? Are you that person who calls a friend just to check if they are okay, especially if it's been a long time since you last heard from them? What person are you? Are you a friend in need and a friend indeed? Are you that person who does unto others as you would wish others to do for yourself? Are you that person who is quick to say sorry when you've offended someone? Are you that person who shares motivational videos and encouraging videos with your friends instead of a lot of stupid videos on social media? Are you that person who lets bygones be bygones? Having asked all of these questions, and there are several, many more questions that I could ask, I want to think about someone who inspires me a lot. There's a lady in America called Ellen DeGeneres who has a talk show. And what I like about her is that she believes the world can be a better place if people can just show a bit more love, even if it is through little acts of kindness. And her vision is that people can, in their ordinary ways, still do extraordinary, extraordinary things, which also resonates with the video I watched where the lady was simply saying, we have a lot of people who do ordinary things, a lot of ordinary people who do ordinary things. But what the world needs right now is ordinary people who do extraordinary things. And what does she mean by that? Ordinary people doing extraordinary things are little daily acts of kindness. Just be consistent. You don't have to do anything massive or anything big. Simple daily little acts of kindness will go a long way. I want to think about um, like a, a question I always ask myself or would like to ask you is what sort of message would you like to see engraved on your tombstone? Are you living your life in a way that reflects that message that you would like to see engraved on your tombstone? I know this is a tricky question because many people don't like to think about death, but there's a fine line between life and death. And only a week ago, the death of basketballer Kobe Bryant, may he and the souls of all faithful departed rest in peace and all of his companions that were on the plane crash with him. May they all rest in peace. Amen. His death was a true reminder of the thin line between life and death. We go chasing dreams and chasing fame and chasing money and chasing vanity, forgetting that this life is not really ours. And any moment now, anyone can drop dead. And what would you have to show for it? So that reminds me about the fact that many journalists were touched by Kobe Bryant's death. And even Wendy, I don't know if you don't know Wendy Williams, she's another talk show and she has a part of a big program called uh, Hot Topics in which she always talks about the latest news in town. And last week she was talking about Kobe. She was really in tears and she spilled tea or coffee. I can't remember on her dress. And I remember seeing her say, oh, why am I even worried about this? Let me just enjoy life. I'm alive. Wow. Kobe Bryant's death made her realize those are little things. She, she was just happy to be alive. It had to take that death to bring that realization. If we all could think like that and realize, you know what, let's just celebrate life and be happy that we are alive, the world would be a better, a, a better place. I am also thinking about a friend's mother-in-law who passed away recently. So death seems to be one of those things I'm going to be talking about. And what I liked was when I called to express my words of condolences with her, she shared with me her mother-in-law's final words, which were, I am now ready to go meet my savior. And those were her last words, and then she passed on. 
What a way to live your life and to die. Would we not all want to live our life in such a satisfactory manner that when we're going, we should be happy to go because we've lived life at its best, done all we wanted to do, know we've done our best and ready to go. Um, so as I'm asking these questions about are you that person and wanting us to reflect on it, I'm going to also share a few other stories and testimonies the next thing I want to share, which is one of the, when I'm talking about sharing inspiring stories, this story inspired me a lot and touched me so much. A friend of mine on Facebook exactly a week ago posted a message sharing a personal experience, a difficult experience he went through, which I was unaware of. His experience goes as follows. He, a, a few years ago, uh, there was a theft and a murder and the boys this was in Cameroon by the way and the boys were caught unfortunately for my friend who was a businessman and owned a bar one of these young thieves or murderers mentioned his name as being an accomplice and he was picked up and taken to prison the, the, the young man finally confessed that he did that simply because he knew that Valentine uh, had money and would be able to bribe uh, the police and they would be released. Unfortunately, that was not the case. But a few uh, days later, Valentine was able to get a, a lawyer and a friend who was able to bail him out and thanks to other prisoners who overheard the conversation of the, the one who had betrayed him confessing, Valentine was released. And what Valentine did was upon his release, he made a decision to go to law school. This was a man who'd been to school, he'd had a degree, he started a business, was doing very well, had employed people, he had at least 20 people working for him. And then his life just crumbled because of this one incident. Of course, because people boycotted his bar. People weren't going to drink there anymore. And his life changed in an instant. But this is the story of a man who picked himself from the pit and rose above the challenges. He decided to go back to, to law school. And as I speak, four days ago, he swore in as a lawyer. This is a success story I want to share just to encourage other people who are going through a difficult time. Always look in that situation, what you can do to change your situation from a negative into a positive. I believe, hand on heart, that Valentine has a story to tell and his story will inspire many people. He is going to change many lives, not only by what he says, but by the people whose cases he will be defending in future. Another inspiring story I want to share very quickly is one of a lady called Hannah. She's on YouTube with her boyfriend, Shane. Hannah and Shane are an incredible couple because Shane is disabled. He is on a wheelchair. He's always been on a wheelchair from birth and he has a condition they call Spinal muscular atrophy is abbreviated SMA and it is a genetic condition that causes a person's muscles to, to weaken over time. Now, this young man is disabled to a point where if you just look at him physically, you would ride him off. And many people look low upon people with certain disabilities they they think it's the end of their life and they will be lonely forever but hannah a lovely soul i think she's just an angel from heaven who was sent to guard shane fell in love with shane she did not look at his physical whether he was uh, physically attract attractive or not she didn't look at his disability as a barrier she didn't look at his illness as an obstacle. She didn't look at his man, the manner in which he speaks because he has a speech in 
impairment, impediment, I'm not sure what the word is. You know, she looked beyond that and saw his heart. How many of us look beyond the physical and seek to see the heart of someone? And so they, they go on YouTube by the name of, let me see if I can find that name. I think it's Squirmy and Grubs. What I will do is add their link here because it's good to watch some of these videos to just know, you know, there is hope out there for everybody. And so I'm going to go back to the question I asked at the beginning. Are you that person? Are you that person that when people are in a desperate situation, be it even in a state of disability like Shane in this story that I've just shared, that they can turn to you? Do you give hope to others? Do you make others feel good about themselves? Do you make others feel like their lives are worth living? Let me just give you a couple of seconds to think about that. Like, what do you do to make the world a better place through your interactions with the humans around you? What do you do? Now, if you already do certain things, if you've given yourself time to pause and think, well done, continue to do them and do them regularly because those are the daily regular acts of kindness that make you extraordinary. And you may not even know you're extraordinary. People may not even tell you that you're extraordinary. But if you know you're doing those little acts of kindness on a daily basis, then you are. Please, I'll encourage you to watch uh, motivational and encouraging videos, especially people like Ellen DeGeneres. She's doing a fab job making, transforming lives and just encouraging people to be positive. Someone like Hannah and Shane, their YouTube channel, Squirmy and Grubs, is one to watch. Shout out to you, Valentine. I hope that many people will learn from your story and start to turn the negative aspects of their lives into a positive. So I will leave you now by saying, please keep being happy. Keep being loving. Keep smiling and be thankful for every passing day of your life. God bless you. Have a nice day. Please do like, share and click the subscribe button here below. Thank you. Bye.